Welcome, Pleasant Grove family, and thank you for joining us for today's virtual worship experience. We are happy to have you with us. Sing along with our praise team and get into the word with our pastor, Dr. Sammy J. Dow. 
Leave a comment in the thread and let us know where you're worshiping from. Remember to like, share, and subscribe at The Grove Atlanta on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Vimeo, and YouTube. At The Grove, we are transformed people transforming the world. Hey, family, let's get ready for worship. Well, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. For I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, if you're excited to be in worship, put your hands together and give God a great praise today. Amen. We're so grateful for another opportunity to gather and worship, grateful to who, for who God is in each and every one of our lives. Come on, as we begin worship together today, let's recite together our vision and mission statements. And we read together, we are a progressive community of believers being transformed by God and transforming others through spiritual development, radical generosity, holistic wellness, social witness, and community engagement. Our mission is to be transformed people, transforming the world. Come on, church family, let's get ready to worship the Lord together. Come on, we come to bless the Lord. So why don't you put your hands together? Come on, we come to bless him. soul to bless the Lord. I command my soul to bless the Lord. I command my soul to bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I command my feet to leap for joy. I command my feet to leap for joy. I command my feet to leap for joy. Hallelujah. Lord, hallelujah. I command my voice to sing his praise. I command my voice to sing his praise. I command my voice to sing his praise. Deserves it. He's a worthy. Yes, he is. Come on, 
He's worthy of all our praise, all our honor. He's worthy to be blessed. Oh, we're going to take it back to the old church. So if you know the song, just help us worship Jesus. Oh, God, we bless you. God, we honor you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy, you ought to bless his holy name. Come on, help us sing. I will bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Sing it again. I will bless. I will bless, bless the Lord. Oh my soul. Oh my soul. And all, and all that is within me. That is within me. Bless His soul. Bless His holy. Bless His holy. Come on, he has done great things. He has done great things. He has done. He has done great things. He has done. He your holy name. Let's try that again. He has done great things. He has done great things. Oh, he has done great things.
so grateful to God for our music ministry, the way they continue to bless us. For those of you here in the sanctuary with me, you may be seated in the presence of God. We're so grateful for how God continues to bless and keep and navigate our lives in tremendous and phenomenal ways. So grateful to each and every one of you joining us for worship today. If you're joining us online for the very first time, we want to say to you, welcome to the Grove. We want you to let us know who you are in the comment thread, where you're from, how you connected with us, who invited you to share in worship today. So that way, everyone who's watching with you can let you know just how excited we are to have you sharing with us. We hope it won't be your last time, but that you'll continue to connect with us, even in virtual space, as we continue to hear from God, as God continues to transform our lives so that we can transform the lives of others. Come on, family, help me celebrate God for all of our first-time visitors. Church family, make sure that you are connected with us on all of our digital platforms. It's the means, the mechanisms that we have to communicate, to share information with you. We're at The Grove Atlanta on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Vimeo, YouTube. Even on YouTube, you can subscribe to our channel, hit the bell so that you get notifications every time we drop new content. You can also join our mobile list. You see that information there on your screen. You can also log on to our website, pleasantgrove.org, scroll all the way to the bottom. You can input your email address. You can stay connected with us via our email newsletter. However you choose to connect and engage, it's entirely on you. We just want to make sure that we take advantage of the opportunities that we have to receive information and to stay in the know. Well, I'm excited today because the fourth Sunday in September officially marks four years since I was installed as the 13th pastor here at the Pleasant Grove Missionary Baptist Church. Four years literally have flown by. It feels like just yesterday. I still have the day vividly in my head, but God has continued to bless us in tremendous and phenomenal ways. And not only is today uh, the official day of pastoral anniversary, but First Lady and I also celebrate six years of marriage today. So we are excited about it being both pastoral anniversary day and wedding anniversary day and praying for God's continued favor and blessings. Well, as we continue in worship, it's an opportunity that we can all now participate in where we can worship the Lord through giving. It's a dime from every dollar, 10%, the first fruits of our increase, we bring into God's house so that there'll literally be meat here. And when we do that, God promises that he'll bless us in tremendous and overwhelming ways, literally blessing us so much that we won't have enough room to receive it all. Number of ways that you can give here at the Grove, traditionally via cash check or money order, you can mail those to us. You can drop them here in our mail slot. We're located at 566 Whitlock Avenue Northwest, Marietta, Georgia, 30064. Or you can log on to our website, pleasantgrove.org slash give. You can give easily and conveniently there, or you can download the Givelify app. Set up your profile. Once you do so, you can give easily, quickly, conveniently, securely. You can even set up giving reminders and recurring gifts. So that, that way we always honor the Lord with the first fruits of that which he has blessed each and every one of us with. Well, as you continue preparing your gifts unto the Lord, we want to recite together now our radical generosity confession. And we read together, I bring all of my tithes and offerings into the storehouse so that there will be meat in God's house. I believe that the windows of heaven will be opened and blessings poured out 
that I won't have room enough to receive according to Malachi 3 and 10. I am a cheerful giver and bring my tithes and offerings willingly according to 2 Corinthians 9 and 7. I will practice radical generosity and random acts of kindness in my family, my church, and my community. I decree and declare that my life and the lives of those connected to me will be transformed because of my obedience in Jesus' name. Amen. As you continue worshiping the Lord through giving, our music ministry comes to prepare us now for today's message.
we bless you even now because you are worthy to be praised. A strong God, a strong deliverer in each and every one of our lives. We bless you for the ways that you continue to keep and bless us. The way you continue to pour yourself out upon us. We love you. Speak to us now. Strengthen and encourage our hearts through your word so that we might run on just a little while longer to see what ends you have in store for us. It's in the strong and powerful name of Jesus the Christ we do pray. And we all sit together. Amen. Amen. And amen. Well, we'll continue today. Numbers chapter 13. Numbers chapter 13. It's the end of verse 33 that I'll lift for our consideration today. Numbers chapter 13, verse 33, the New International Version of the scripture records, we seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we looked the same to them. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we looked the same to them. I'd like to tag today's message, you're more than that. You're more than that. You may be seated even in the presence of God. This particular narrative found here in Numbers 13 follows a remarkable set of events and divine appearances. God has now delivered the Israelites from this bondage by softening Pharaoh's heart with the manifestation of the plagues. He's led them along the journey of escape from Egypt, including the parting of the Red Sea and has sustained them over the course of their journey. Now we have reached the point in the story that was supposed to show how the drama of the exodus and the wilderness wanderings was going to reach a triumphant conclusion. However, the story we see unfolding here in Numbers 13 is an interesting turn of events in the storied history of the Israelite people. God directs Moses to send 12 men, one leader from each of the 12 tribes of Israel, to spy out the land. The spies were all men of rank in their tribes. These were the heads of the children of Israel. Obeying God's instructions, Moses sends out the spies to see what this promised land is really like. The instructions given by uh, Moses to the spies are recorded in earlier passages of scripture. They were to penetrate the south part of the land. They were to go over the hill country to make some assessment of the possible military strength of the people, the people's aptitude for war, and to estimate the economic resources of the land. Yes, this land that they are now investigating, that they are now evaluating, spying out is the land that God had promised even Abraham that he would give to his descendants. This is the land they have been waiting to see, but God doesn't just drop the promised land in their laps. No, he commands Moses to send spies into the land to evaluate the details of what they see and to bring back a sample of the fruit that the land produces. This land is theirs. It is waiting for them, but they have to first investigate what God has promised to give them. There are enemies of the Israelites who are occupying the land at this time, but God says, go take a look at what I am going to give you. We now know that God instructed Moses to send spies into the promised land so that the Israelites had the necessary information they needed to manage the magnitude of what God was about to bestow upon their lives. This is an important revelation for each of us because we often mismanage God's promises and blessings, not because we don't desire to do the right thing, but because we lack knowledge regarding just how big God performs in each of our lives. So God sends them in to investigate and to develop a report of what they see in the promised land so that God has an indication of their level of readiness for what he wants to do. 
Then Moses gave Hoshea, son of Nun, the name Joshua. This is a subtle but significantly important occurrence in the life of the Israelites because God shifts the name of this spy before he goes into the promised land so that Joshua goes into the promised land understanding that he's not operating in his own strength. He, he's not operating in his own ability to persevere and to deliver himself, but God is the one who is persevering and saving and keeping and sustaining and protecting him even as he goes into the promised land no matter what giants he sees when he gets there. So the spies go into the promised land. They evaluate the promised land and 10 of them come back with a report that says we don't have what it takes to overcome the barriers in that land. But Joshua and Caleb come back with the report that said, we most definitely can pursue this promised land and we can overcome any giants and obstacles that are in the promised land. But then look at how chapter 13 closes. Uh, they say we were like grasshoppers in our own eyes and we looked like grasshoppers to them. These are the same children of Israel that God has brought out of the land of Egypt. He's parted the Red Sea. He's provided manna in the wilderness every day for some four decades. And now here they are being invited into a preview of what God wants to do. And their response is, we were like grasshoppers in our own eyes. And, and we looked the same to them. After all that God had done for them, they only viewed themselves as nothing more than grasshoppers who lacked the ability to overcome everything that God had already promised he would conquer on their behalf. The people whom God has given a promise regarding the place where they are now investigating are the same people who come back and have the audacity to say we can't do it because we look too small in our own eyes. We look too small to handle what appears to be happening around us. We look too small to be, over, to be able to overcome the giants. We look too small to be able to overcome pandemic. We look too small to be able to do, deal with the circumstances and the challenges. We look too small in our own eyes. And because I have a small view of myself, I then believe that I look small to the challenges I am facing. How can we be a recipient of God's promises? How can we have experienced God's goodness and still have a negative self-perception of what we look like and what God says we can do? Come here. Here's what I'm trying to get you to see. This is why this sermon is important because too many of us miss what God wants to do. We don't realize the power that God can exact and exert upon our lives because we have a wrong self-perception. And we start repeating false narratives to ourselves about ourselves. When we don't attempt to view ourselves as God views us, we start to live beneath the place where God says that we can live. We start to abandon dreams and walk away from realities that God has destined for us to realize. We remain stuck where we are because a small view of ourselves keeps us in the same cycles and routines that we've become accustomed to because when we don't view ourselves the right way, we don't believe that God has any more in store for us. The devil is a liar. I've come to tell somebody today, even as we cross the threshold of year four and begin the journey towards year four, Five, you can pursue a promise that God has made you and you can overtake every giant that attempts to rise up against you. You don't have to reduce yourself to nothing more than a grasshopper and you don't have to fit into anybody else's definition of you. No, you're not just a grasshopper. I dare you to look at yourself and say, I'm a child of God. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. He knows the plans that he has for me. He has a plan to restore me, a plan plan to give me hope, a plan to make me strong, a plan to make me courageous. I'm not a grasshopper. I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. I'm not above, I'm not above and not beneath. I'm the head and not the tail. Somebody ought to be able to slap five with yourself even in your house and shout, I don't care what it looks like. I've got everything that God says I need. Because because God's promise, God's promise and goodness in each of our lives should make us see ourselves 
as more than the labels and limitations we have created. Say that again. God's promise, his, 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 his desire to accomplish something significant in our lives should push all of us to see ourselves as more than the labels and the limitations that we have created. Because the challenge for us is to stretch ourselves beyond the right now view of whatever giants exist in our lives and to press towards the not yet view of God's promises. Limitations, obstacles, challenges, frustrations, setbacks should not push us to doubt what God can do. They should push us uh, to remember all that God has already done so that we have a firm view on what God has the capacity to do now and what he'll continue to do in the future. Uh, the question for us becomes, how do we see uh, the more that God has put in us? How do, we, how do we prepare ourselves for the more in store? How do we view ourselves as more than just grasshoppers? How do we develop a God-driven perspective about who we are? First thing the Texas Taylor to teach us is we have to adjust the position of who we listen to. We have to adjust the position of who we listen to. Look at verse 32. It says, and they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. And they, they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land that they, have, uh, that they have explored. Catch this, because the spies come back and begin planting seeds of doubt and pessimism and negativity in the minds of the people so that that way they could turn the people's heart away from even wanting to pursue the promised land so that they wouldn't have to argue back and forth with the people about whether or not they should move forward. They said, listen, if we get back and we tell everybody how terrible this place was then they won't want to go there and we can fall into the trap of staying where we are because we've sabotaged their view of where God wants to take us come here you have to be careful when you identify people who always have a negative opinion about where God is taking you and what God is shaping. You have to be careful about people who allow their own limitations and their own in, uh, deficiencies and deficits cause them to define what you can do, who you are and what God can accomplish in your life. You have to be careful of those I've never seen anybody do anything like that before kind of people because they don't understand the promise and the power that rests upon your life because they're trying to measure it based on the limits of their own you've got to be careful of people who if I were you I wouldn't do or I would do x and y and z because they are not you they don't carry what you carry and they haven't heard what you've heard from God you've got to begin to lean your ear towards the lips of God and whatever God says you can do and whatever God says you can have and whatever God says he'll perform and whoever God says you can be that has to become the loudest voice in your ear so that you don't become distracted from where you are going and shaping a view of yourself based on people who don't like themselves come here somebody needs to be set free of somebody today who can't encourage you and who can't cheer you on because they don't like themselves and they don't know how to cheer for themselves the devil is a liar I don't have to believe every negative report but according to the word of God whose report should Shall we believe I'll re believe the report of the Lord and if the Lord said I can go into the land I'm going into the land and if he says I can defeat a giant somebody give me a smooth stone and a slingshot and I'm going to take out every giant in the land because I'm tired of listening to reports about what we can do and what we don't have but I'm ready to walk into a report that says I can have what God says I can have you have to adjust the position you have to adjust the position of who you're listening to. You also have to adjust the perspective about what you're facing. You have to adjust the perspective of what you're facing. Watch this. The Israelites saw the size of the giants and gave the giants more credit than they really deserved. Uh, although the giants were big in size, they lacked power. 
Because there was some power that was at work in the lives of the Israelites that could overcome the size of the perceived power that the giants had. Come here, can I tell you something? So many of us look at mountains and circumstances and situations and giants in our lives and we start to doubt who we are and what we can do because of how big the issues are that we are facing. God says the devil is a liar. You don't have to be bound by how big a problem or a giant looks. He says, you do remember that there was a shepherd boy uh, who literally had a, a, a smooth stone and a slingshot. And while everybody else was doubting if they could take down the giant, David stepped forward and said, I'll go and fight Goliath. And so literally it says he stepped out in front of the pack and he reached over in his knapsack and he pulled out of his knapsack a smooth stone and a slingshot y'all that thing makes me shout because the stone wasn't rough and rugged no it was a smooth stone it was a stone that had been softened by spending some time in a body of water but he pulled the stone from his bag put it in his slingshot and I could almost see David standing there everybody behind him wondering what's happening what's going to come of this that boy's crazy he has no business pursuing that kind of victory and that kind of promise and that kind of transformation and that kind of change. Something wrong with that boy. I told y'all y'all shouldn't have voted him in when y'all voted him in. Something wrong with that boy standing up there looking at those giants talking about he can take a stone and a slingshot and bring the giant tumbling down. But David says y'all be quiet. I need to focus and I need to get my attention together and he released the stone from the slingshot and it says that when it made contact with Goliath, Goliath fell he came tumbling down and they advanced in the battle and victory was theirs come here I'm trying to tell somebody it looks big but I remember that when I was growing up I heard somebody say the bigger they are the harder they fall and I come to tell somebody today you take your stone and your slingshot and you release it in the direction of your giants and you trust that the God who has kept me all of this time is the same God who'll keep me when I go to pull down the strong holes that are attempting to keep me from my promise you have to adjust the perspective of what you are facing you also you also have to you have to you have to adjust the perspective about how you are seen how you are seen because they said not only do we look like grasshoppers to ourselves we look like grasshoppers to them too Hold on, wait. How do you know what you look like to them and you've had no conversation with them? Or have you allowed yourself to shrink from who you are because of what you think they see? The fact of the matter is the giants are just as scared of you as you are of the giants. Because when the giants see you, they don't just see you standing by yourself. The giants see an army of angels that have encamped themselves around you. So when you think the giants are looking at you, the giants can't see you at all. What the giants see is an angelic army of angels who have come before you with their swords drawn, ready to fight on your behalf. So while you're looking through the vision of angels, trying to see what the giants look like, the giants can't see you at all because by the time the giants get a view of you, they will have already fallen because of who you have fighting on your behalf. Come here, what am I trying to tell you? Every time you show up to a problem and every time you show up to a challenge you don't show up by yourself and you don't show up looking like what you think you look like but I dare you to slap five with yourself and shout I've got some angels that go in front of me and I've got some angels on the side of me and I've got some angels that are behind me and they're building a hedge of protection around me so even when I think I look small I've got some backup fighting on my behalf and if I've got them fighting on my behalf I can take anything that 
comes my way lastly and I'm done lastly and I'm done you have to adjust the perspective of how you're seeing you got to be careful about who you're listening to you got to make sure you have the right view of what's really in front of you then lastly you have to be sure of what you can accomplish watch this watch this Reverend Underwood I started I started studying this thing because what is it about grasshoppers they said we were like grasshoppers in our own eyes and we looked like grasshoppers to them so y'all know I had to go and I needed to d discover a few facts about grasshoppers to help me understand why they would dare uh, dare have the audacity to say that we were nothing more than grasshoppers but y'all I discovered something interesting about grasshoppers because grasshoppers are typically ground dwelling insects watch this but they have powerful hind legs which allowed them to escape from a threat by leaping onto another surface. Y'all can catch this thing. Grasshoppers typically dwell on the ground. But whenever there's a threat, whenever there's an issue, whenever there's a problem, whenever there's a giant, the grasshoppers can escape the threat and danger by using their powerful hind legs to jump to a higher surface. I'm going to say that thing one more time and then I got to let you go. Grasshoppers typically dwell on the ground in a low place until there is the threat of danger. They then can use their powerful hind legs to jump from the ground low place where they dwell to a higher place of protection from the threat of danger that is surrounding them. Come here, what am I trying to say to you? You may think you are nothing more than a grasshopper who dwells in a low place. But what you don't realize is God has given you the authority and the ability that whenever a circumstance and a challenge shows up, you can use what he's put on the inside of you to jump from the low place to a higher place of protection. And somebody needs to know that no matter what is happening in your life, God has already put on the inside of you what you need not only to remain safe, but to jump over some of the stuff that is encountering your life. And I need you to know, no matter what the challenge, no matter what the struggle, no matter what the obstacle, I need somebody to say, I might be in a low place right now, but I believe God has given me what I need to jump to a higher place. Somebody ought to be able to testify that I have some I have some uh, some some flashbacks of when God would pull me from some low places and every time God pulled me from a low place he set my feet on a higher place he set me in a place where I was protected and and he set me in a place where I was covered and he set me in a place where I was secure I'm done may the Lord God bless you real good but I need somebody to declare that even in the face of giants I'm going and use some of the power that God has put down on the inside of me and I'm going to begin to leap into a place of safety and I'm going to leap into a place of protection and I'm going to leap into a place of security and not only am I going to leap over all of the challenges but I'm going to leap right into the promises of God I need somebody to declare I'm going to use my power not just to jump over the mountains and not just to fight the giants and not just to overcome COVID and not just to deal with pandemic but I'm going to use my power to accomplish more than I ever thought I could do I believe that's what the Bible says and now unto him who is able to do exceeding and abundantly more than we can ask or think according to the power at work on the inside of us I came to tell somebody you've got some mountain moving power and you've got some demon trembling power and you've got some sickness overcoming power and you've got some put your heart back together power and you've got some get you some peace of mind power is there anybody who's listening to me today who can shout I know what it is for God's wonder working power to be released in my life open up your mouth throw your head back and begin to give God praise power wonder working power somebody shout it's in the blood of the lamb I've got power wonder working power it's been good <laughs> 
it's been good to me and the only reason I'm still standing and the only reason I still got my right mind and the only reason I look as good as I do and the only reason I'm still worshiping and the only reason I'm still dancing and the only reason I'm still praying is because I've got some power at work on the inside of me come here Jeremiah he said this power at work on the inside of me it feels like fire fire shut up in my bones open up your mouth throw your head back and shout power power shout yes shout yes shout yes shout yes got some power that not only has been invested in me it's been entrusted to me uh, which means I have to steward it I have to manage it I have to use it responsibly or give an account for how, how, I, how I have misused what God has freely given me. He's given me power I didn't have to pay for, power I couldn't afford to pay for, power we didn't deserve. But he's given it to us so that even when we don't see ourselves as enough, he says, don't worry about it. Because of what I've entrusted in you, what I've put in you, you're more than you could ever imagine. And you can do even what looks uncertain in your life there's somebody watching today who says pastor that's me i don't view myself the way i should i don't view myself through the eyes that god views me today my testimony is i need to i need to hit the reset button on my view of myself i know sometimes life and our circumstances our situations our backgrounds people we have encountered can cause us to have a wrong view of ourselves but Jesus says, don't you, don't, you, don't you allow any of that to stop you because of the sacrifice of his son. He says we literally have a new image, a new life that we experience. And I want you to begin to view yourself as God views you and to begin to view your capacity as God says your capacity is. You're watching today. You've never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior, never invited him into your heart, into your life, to come in, to save you, to change you, to live in you. You're here today and you say, today's my day. I, I want to be in relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. If that's you from wherever you are, wherever you may be watching today, I want you to know that there is absolutely nothing better than knowing Jesus. He literally has the capacity to pick you up, to turn your life around. He makes you brand new when you're in relationship with him. If that's you, you're here today and you need to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior for the very first time. I want you to log on to joinpleasantgrove.org. Join pleasantgrove.org. There you'll see where you can input some information about yourself. Tell us about the decision that you are making today to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. We want to reach out to you this week to celebrate the decision that you're making for Jesus Christ and to welcome you to the family of faith. Head over right now to joinpleasantgrove.org. Or you say, Pastor Dow, I'm watching and I need to hit the reset button on my relationship with God. I need to start all over again, anew, afresh. I, I literally need God to wipe my slate clean and to give me another chance. I want you to know that he loves you so much that he'll not only give you a second chance, he'll give you another chance. If that's you today and you say, I need to recommit my life to Jesus Christ. I also want you to head over to joinpleasantgrove.org and let us know today's my day. I'm getting back in right relationship with Jesus Christ. If that's you, head over to the website right now. You see it on your screens. Thirdly, you're here. You say, Pastor Dow, I believe that this is where God wants me to anchor myself, to plant, to connect. I believe that this is the church that he wants me to be a part of. I want you to know something. I can't wait to be your pastor. All of the amazing people connected with our church can't wait to welcome you as the newest addition to our family. 
If that's you, you know that today's your day to become a part of our family. I want you to head over to joinpleasantgrove.org and to fill out the information there today. Those are the three invitations I have for you today. You need to accept Jesus Christ. You need to recommit your life or you want to become a part of God's church. If any of the three of those apply to you from wherever you may be, head over to the website right now. We can't wait to get you there. Can't wait to see who you are, to meet you, to learn more about you. Come on right now. Today, just come. come on everybody, real big. There's nothing better. Oh, come on, somebody that knowing Jesus. Come on, he'll pick you up. Get to know him. Come on, real big, real big, right now. Right now, today, just come. Come on, y'all keep singing, y'all keep singing. There's nothing better. May the Lord make his face to smile upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance round about you and grant you his peace. And may the Lord bless you in your going and in your coming, in your rising and in your settling, in your labor, and yes, even in your leisure, in your laughter, and in your tears. Until that day when we're all gathered at the feet of Jesus, and there'll be no more sunrise or sunset. May the Lord God bless you and keep you forever is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, nothing better than knowing Jesus, than knowing Jesus. He will pick you up and turn.